Hi, it's Dwyer. It's February 24th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk heavyweight boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've said it many times here online. We are in a big, clunky, heavyweight era. The guys are huge. They don't move their feet that well. They're not that fluid. There's a premium on power shots. Some of the recent heavyweight champions are low on volume. They're just trying to land their Sunday punch. It might be a straight right hand. It might be a left hook. They're not trying to fool you with slick combinations. They're not trying to outbox you. They're flat-footed. They're not up on the toes of their feet. They're not moving a lot laterally. No, they're trying to blow you out of the water. They understand that historically they're big. When compared against some of the giants of yesteryear. So here we have the bronze medalist from the 2016 Olympic Games, Philip Ergovic. And the IBF has just ordered him to fight Michael Hunter for mandatory contender status. Now this is huge, almost as big as Ergovic is. He's 6'6". Like some of the other elite fighters today in the heavyweight division, he has an excellent concussive straight right hand. He also has a left hook. You'll notice that when he figures out that he can land that straight right hand, after he's hurt an opponent, he'll double, he'll triple up with the punch. He wants you in the pocket. He wants to find you. He's a hunter. He wants to blow you out. His punches are heavy. He's not throwing a lot of punches to win rounds on the scorecards. This is a guy trying to knock you down. Now let me just say, it's my theory, it's my belief, having watched different eras in the heavyweight division, going back to Joe Fraser, and of course, hearing about the original Cassius Clay, Cassius X, Muhammad Ali era from my father's generation. It's my belief that this big, clunky, flat-footed, low-volume, high-power shot era is going to give way to boxing to an era where heavyweights again move their feet, where there are a lot of feints, not just a feint to set up a power shot either, feints to set up combinations to win rounds. There's gonna be more strategy involved than simply timing a guy and landing your Sunday punch. Now it's my belief that one of the most dangerous men, and I mean this, one of the most dangerous men right now in the heavyweight division is Michael Hunter. Let's just say that Michael Hunter uses his feet, can box. In this era, he looks undersized because people like Ergovic are 6'6", right? You have a lot of tall, big men in the heavyweight division. Hunter isn't 6'6". He's more of a classical heavyweight. Right? Let's remember. I believe for the first Joe Fraser-Ali fight, Joe Fraser comes in weighing less than 210 pounds. Well, Hunter's a little bit bigger than that. But understand that Hunter, and I know it, it because his game's diverse, you don't realize it. 
But Hunter, like Ergovic, has a great right hand. He also has movement. And I don't mean just lateral movement with his feet. Right? I don't mean the ability to always have his feet set to throw punches, which guys who move their feet well seem to always have. I'm talking about upper body movement, something that's missing from a Deontay Wilder fight, from an Anthony Joshua fight. Right? Both men held or are holding the heavyweight belt for years. Right? No, I'm talking about upper body movement that you haven't seen among elite heavyweights outside of Tyson Fury. You do have guys new to the division. Usyk can move his upper body. Let's just say the guys who rule the roost two years ago, who continue to rule the roost, I believe they might be part of an era that's passing. So, understand too, whereas you're watching a Deontay Wilder fight and you know the rhythm of the fight already, right? Wilder's waiting. Wilder's waiting. He wants a Luis Ortiz to make a mistake. He wants a Dominique Brazil to make a mistake. They make a mistake up Here's a straight right hand. Good night, Irene. Thank you for coming. The judges' scorecards are an afterthought. Worse yet, when you see the judges' scorecards, you're completely confused. You're thinking, man, I, I, I saw this fight. I was watching the second and third rounds. How could any judge give those rounds to Deontay Wilder? That's the era we live in. Now with Hunter, you can't get the rhythm of the fight. Because Hunter is that jazz musician who can go off rhythm. He goes off rhythm by design. It throws opponents off. They don't know the rhythm of his punches. One of the best rounds, and Hunter's on his front foot in the fight. Keep in mind, Hunter can be on his back foot. Keep in mind, this is a guy who's fought elites. He fought Usyk at Cruiser. He fought Ustinov when the world thought very highly of Ustinov. He fought Povetkin and did a hell of a lot better than Dylan White did. Right? A hell of a lot better. Understand, Dylan White exemplifies this era. As an amateur, Dylan White was up on his toes. He was dancing. That's not who he is now. Right now, he's a guy who bludgeons you with the jab. He's around the pocket. He's relatively stationary. That's not Michael Hunter. So, the first round of the Hunter Povetkin fight, Hunter comes out and surprises Povetkin. He's on his front foot. Now, the interesting thing in that fight is that fight featured two of the better athletes in the heavyweight division. I know, both are over 30, but this is the heavyweight division. I know, Prevetkin's around 40. But again, this is the heavyweight division. Remember my rule of relativity. Whatever's happening in the other world of boxing, in the heavyweight division, guys age more slowly. Right, in this division, you hear a guy is 32. Right, which would make him a grandfather at lightweight. In this division, you hear 32, you think to yourself, oh, he's a young man. Right? You look at an Anthony Joshua, isn't he around 30? And you think of him as a young heavyweight with several years left. I don't care who he's fighting. I know when Luis Ortiz is in the ring against another ranked heavyweight, I know that other ranked heavyweight's going to have a hard time. I'm not thinking about Luis Ortiz's age. I'm thinking about his skills. That's the division. Well, Michael Hunter is 32. Understand, he's fought Usyk. <coughs> gave Usyk 
one of Usyk's better matches, quite frankly, ultimately fell apart in the later rounds. Right? Understand, Usyk is much more athletic than most heavyweights. And, of course, he fought Usyk in Usyk's kingdom, the cruiserweight division. He fought Ustinov, he beats Ustinov, was just too elusive. But to me, his coup de grace, and I was shocked by this, are the early rounds of the Alexander Povetkin fight. He's in against another athlete, and he's just damn too elusive. This is while he's on his front foot. And you understand, he's landing big shots, but he's not relying on big shots. There's a boxing game there. As you watch the round, you understand, oh, he's winning this round. He's not waiting for anything. Right? Povetkin is thrown off by the timing. Povetkin is thrown off by the audacity, right? Because Hunter's on his front foot. And if you look at Hunter films, there are films where he's on his back foot. In other words, even the opponent who studies the game is guessing on what Hunter's going to do. And Hunter's roughing up Povetkin. Povetkin was lucky to get the draw in that fight. Very lucky. I would encourage people to look at the 10th round. Hunter decides to go to Povetkin's body. Other than the round where Povetkin gets stopped by Anthony Joshua. Or when he gets dropped by Vladimir Klitschko. Povetkin never looked that bad to me. He looks overmatched in the 10th round. Against Michael Hunter, he's completely caught off guard in the first round by Michael Hunter. I like Michael Hunter in this fight. The IBF has just made the announcement that he needs to fight Ergovic. I haven't seen odds posted on this fight, so this fight isn't really an odds-based video. I'll make one of those later. This is just an initial impression. I think the heavyweight division is not what most people think it is. I think the dangerous guys are guys like Hunter, are guys like Joseph Parker, who I'm picking over Junior Farr, but even I can see. The odds, the betting odds for that fight have gotten a little out of line. Maybe I'll sprinkle a little on Junior Farr now. But I think it's the athletes who can move. Usyk. Right? I'd like to see Maris Bredis back at heavyweight. I believe it's the more coordinated, smaller guys who aren't loading up on one punch who would give the top rung of the heavyweight division problems. Keep in mind, even Tyson Fury, who I consider to be the best in the division, had huge problems with Steve Cunningham. I encourage people to go back and look at that fight. Cunningham, like Usyk, was a studded cruiser who moved up to heavy and was simply too coordinated and too fast for these bigger, clunkier guys. Right? So, I'm expecting Ergovic to find that he can't plant his feet. I'm expecting him to find out that he can't land his straight right hand. That he can't even find Hunter, who's right in front of him. Because Hunter is hiding his head, he's moving his head, he's moving his upper body, and oh yes, while he's doing all that, he's throwing punches back. I think Hunter's volume, Hunter's movement is going to be too much for Ergovic, who has not fought the level of opposition that Hunter has fought. Again, Usyk, I think Usyk might be the second best fighter in the heavyweight division right now. Ustinov, Pervetkin, I mean, folks, Hunter's already survived Povetkin. Do you know who would win an Ergovic versus Povetkin match? Understand, Povetkin 
has been making a living taking out young lions. Right? David Price, for example, in Price's backyard. Dylan White, for example, in Dylan White's backyard. Well, he fought Hunter. Had they given the match to Hunter, no one would have complained. I thought Povetkin was lucky to get the draw. So, in this fight, I'm going with mobility. It's 2021. We're coming out of this ridiculous pandemic. Right? I think we're going to rediscover movement, legs, combinations in the heavyweight division. I think we're going to rediscover fights actually being up in the air, going into the championship rounds. I think we're going to rediscover the value of a scorecard. This isn't going to be Deontay Wilder, uh, Luis Ortiz, the rematch where you're watching it and you don't care about the scorecard because you understand, well, either Wilder catches him or Wilder loses the fight by eight to nine rounds, right? No, no, this is a different day, folks. I think you're going to see fighters saving themselves for certain parts of the fight. I think you're going to see faster hands. You're going to see more volume. You're going to see more elusiveness. It's not going to be two big guys looking at each other for a few rounds. I think Michael Hunter is going to be part of that renaissance. I think this fight is a must-watch. Ergovic is unbeaten. I think you're going to see a big guy trying to hunt down a smaller guy. Some people might think that the smaller guy is going to run. And then they might find out that the smaller guy has the power of the bigger guy. And is actually playing chess by being elusive. I like Michael Hunter in this fight. This, that's my first impression. Right? I'd like to see the lines. I'd like to see the betting odds. I'd like to see the shapes of the fighters because... When you have situations like this, where a sanctioning body orders a fight, you'd be surprised by the variance in the shapes of the fighters, right? Some guys live in the gym. I've never seen Vladimir Klitschko or Evander Holofield out of shape, ever. Other guys, well, let's just say they don't live in the gym that much. Right? Think Andy Ruiz, right? Where you do have to look at the way in. You know, you, you bet some on the guy, but you hold that little bit back just to make sure at the way in the guy looks like himself. Right? I would like to see the shape these guys are in. But when it comes to talent, I think Hunter, who was a distinguished amateur, as was Ergovic, Hunter, who's been in the game longer, who's fought the better competition. Well, let's just say, I think he's the guy who's going to win this fight. We'll talk about betting scenarios when the odds are released. Just understand, I view Hunter as part of a bigger transition for the division. Right? I think the division now is going to get back to movement volume, rhythm, and I think you have to keep an eye on people like Joseph Parker and Michael Hunter, as well as Usyk. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.